Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship on this second Sunday of Easter at Good Shepherd Anglican Church in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Whether you are with us live on this Sunday morning, April 11th, or you're watching the service later, we're so happy that you have joined us. Please take a few moments now in silence to draw your heart to the God who is alive and reigns with forever. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join in singing our opening hymn, Up From the Grave He Arose. From the grave he rose with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, Alleluia, Christ arose. Vainly they watch his bed, Jesus my Savior. Vainly they seal the dead, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he rose, with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, alleluia, Christ arose. Death cannot keep its prey, Jesus my Savior. He tore the bars away, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he rose, with a mighty triumph for his foes. He rose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He Thanks everybody who got really into that one, especially Joyce for telling us in the chat, it's one of your favorites. I love that one too. Please now join in praying together a portion, well, all of Psalm 133 by reading the verses printed on your screen in bold. Oh, how good and pleasant it is. When brethren live together in unity, it is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Hear now readings from God's holy word. A reading from Acts chapter 4. Now the whole group of those who believed were at one of one spirit, one heart and soul, sorry, 
and no one claimed private ownership of any possession, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned the land or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Thank God. Be to God. A reading from the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and his son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his sons, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. We confess our sins. He who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our gospel hymn, Hallelujah. be with you and also with you the holy gospel of our lord jesus christ according to john glory to you lord jesus christ 
When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As my father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the 12, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May only the truth be spoken here and only the truth received in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. When I was growing up, my mother had a children's song she'd love to sing every Easter morning that goes something like this. <laughs> every morning is Easter morning from now on. Every day's resurrection day, the past is over and gone. Goodbye guilt, goodbye fear, good riddance. Hello Lord, hello son. I am one of the Easter people. My new life has begun. How beautiful a thought is that? Every morning is Easter morning from now on. Our Lord's tomb being found empty means that every day's resurrection day, the past is over and gone. That's one of the reasons that as Christians, when we gather to worship during this season of Easter, we greet one another saying, Alleluia, Christ is risen. And in turn, we respond, the Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. We do that because as Christians, we're supposed to be an Easter people. Being an Easter people can sometimes be really difficult, especially when we're living through a global pandemic. I'm willing to wager that when Archdeacon Jordan started today's service with the Paschal greeting, that most of you did not say the response with as much enthusiasm and energy as you did last Sunday. And that's okay, because we can see in our gospel reading that Christ's own disciples couldn't keep up that enthusiasm through the first day. Our gospel reading starts out the evening of that resurrection day. Recall hours earlier, the biggest event in human history, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ had just happened. Are the disciples in the temple praising God? Were they out in the streets celebrating like we would if the COVID-19 pandemic was suddenly over or if the Oilers had just won the Stanley Cup? Nope. They were hiding in a house with the door locked because they were fearful. Then suddenly, Jesus was among them as if he'd been beamed into the room by Scotty from the Starship Enterprise. 
Christ showed them the wounds on his hands and side that he had received from his crucifixion. Before this, they'd simply been witnesses to the empty tomb. Now they had become eyewitnesses to the risen Lord. That is, of course, with the exception of Thomas. Our gospel does not record where Thomas was when Christ appeared to the other disciples, only that he wasn't there. Thomas's reaction to the account given by the other disciples is one of doubt. Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. The church has tended to be very hard on Thomas for his doubts. On one hand, you could say his doubts make sense. Extraordinary claims should be backed by extraordinary proof. However, we have to recall that this gospel, John's gospel, records Thomas as being witness to many miracles performed by Jesus, including the raising of Lazarus from the dead. He's seen some pretty extraordinary things before. So why is it he seems to have trouble believing that he has been, what he has been told by the other disciples? Unfortunately, I don't have a good answer to that question. One week after the resurrection, today, if you will, the disciples are still hiding in the house. Once again, Jesus appears in their midst, only this time, Thomas is there to personally see Jesus and examine his wounds. Christ says to Thomas, do not doubt, but believe. And he does believe. John then records something incredibly important that is usually overlooked. He records Jesus saying to Thomas, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. In a nutshell, Jesus is referring to all of us who have not been eyewitnesses to seeing him risen from the dead. As Christians, we are an Easter people. We are called to be an Easter people because we are called to proclaim that Christ is risen from the grave more than just once a year on Easter Sunday, more than just the season of Easter, which lasts 50 days, but through the whole of our lives. We are called to proclaim that Christ having risen from the dead, has defeated death, and that we too will rise to new life. Having that knowledge, having that belief in the resurrection, and being an Easter people changes everything. We can easily see an example of how it changes people in our reading from Acts. There, the author records that the apostles, the first of the Easter people, were so moved by the grace that they had received from what they had, that they gave up all notion of private property or possession amongst themselves. The result being that there was not a single needy person among them. For the apostles, that was just one example of what it meant to be an Easter people. St. Paul, who had been an active persecutor of the Christian church, became one of the Easter people when he had his conversion experience on the road to Damascus. For him, being one of the Easter people meant traveling throughout the Roman Empire to spread the good news of the risen Lord as well as writing fellow to fellow Christians to exalt God. 
it is Paul, one of the Easter people, who wrote to the Corinthians that death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The eminent preacher, St. John Chrysostom, an early Archbishop of Constantinople, is another example of the Easter people. Chrysostom, who was constantly in conflict, sorry, conflict with the rich and the imperial court for their opulent lifestyles in a city with huge amounts of economic disparity, wrote, Christ is risen and hell is overthrown. Christ is risen and the demons are fallen. Christ is risen and the angels rejoice. Christ is risen and life reigns. Another of the Easter people is Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the 20th century German pastor and theologian who worked to subvert the regime of Adolf Hitler and was executed in a concentration camp less than a month before the end of the Second World War. Bonhoeffer said, nevertheless, it is the free grace of the resurrected one that now also goes after the individual, overcomes the doubter and creates in him the Easter faith. Finally, there is my late mother. My mother who every Easter morning sang that song with such gusto. My mother who lived as if death was not the end and that new life awaits every one of us, lived her life as one of the Easter people. My friends in Christ, Easter is more than just a day. Easter is more than just a season. As Christians, we are called to be an Easter people and to proclaim that Christ is risen through the whole of our lives and to shape our lives accordingly. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Brad, for those words. Let us confess our faith as Easter people then, as we say. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In joy and hope, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory. That our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. In our diocese, we pray for Jane, our bishop, as she prepares to step down this week. For the parish of St. Matthew's Viking and for the Métis settlements in Alberta, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. In the Anglican Church of Canada, we pray for Linda, our primate, and for the Diocese of Saskatchewan and their bishops, Michael, Adam, and Isaiah. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That by his power, wars and famine may cease through, through all the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That his providence may shelter all those suffering under natural disasters, especially those seeing the eruption of La Sovereign. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, that they may be comforted and strengthened. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, that he may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt. May we who have not seen have faith and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Please offer to one another a sign of peace in the chat or by making a peace sign into your video or any other way that you choose to share the peace with one another. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries that need to be blessed this morning? Please do type those into the chat. Okay, while people are typing that in, I would like to just make a couple of announcements. Good morning and welcome again to Good Shepherd. If you're visiting today, we're happy you're here. Please uh, introduce yourself to us in the chat so that we can get to know you a little bit. And uh, if you're willing to share your contact information, then uh, send me an email. A few announcements to share with y'all today. First of all, a thank you. Thank you so much to all of our volunteers who made Holy Week and Easter possible. It was truly a gift to be able to safely have an in-person gathering following the public health guidelines distanced and with capacity limits, but it's not possible for us to do it without our altar guild, our soundboard, our greeters, readers, and more. So please do pass your thanks on to the hardworking team who made our celebrations so meaningful. Some sad news, our parish administrator, Jess, left her position with us. We're so sad to see her go in the same way we're so sad that it is theological student Brad Linseth's last Sunday with us today. Please do take a moment to let both Brad and Jess know how much you have appreciated your, their efforts over this past year. Um, we are grateful for Brad's words this morning, for his teaching, uh, a Christian education course in Lent, and many other things that he was able to do for us. Videos for Holy Week, for example. So please do make sure that you uh, pass along your appreciation of them. 
And if you know anyone who would be a good candidate for our parish administrator, send, send me their name. That would be great. In diocesan news, there will be a special service of prayer for the repose of Prince Philip on Monday evening at the Cathedral live stream page, if anyone would like to attend that. And this coming Saturday, April 17th, a service and farewell reception for Bishop Jane will be held. Please do watch the Synod scene and your weekly roundup for instructions about how to attend these services and wish Bishop Jane the very best as she moves to the next uh, step in her journey as well. Next Sunday will be a green growing Sunday featuring a takeover by the kids and teens of Good Shepherd. That means there will be no kids check in next Sunday. Bring them to worship at 1030. Uh, and that is when we will be seeing the kids. And then at church, we'll have a drive through between two and three. Stay tuned to your weekly roundup for more announcements about that. For all other announcements, please do refer to the weekly roundup. This is the best way to stay the most up to date uh, with what's going on at Good Shepherd. All right, I'm gonna just check the chat here, see if there's any blessings for birthdays or anniversaries. I'm not seeing any. Nobody got older, huh? Nobody got older. Okay, well, I would like to say also how good it is when the family of God dwells together in unity and supports one another. As Brad pointed out, knowing the living Christ changes us and it changes us and spurs us to support one another. And sometimes through direct giving and also through the operations of the church. Thank you everyone for your continued financial gifts. No matter whether you give during the hymn which follows at the link that's on your screen or some other method, know that the prayer we will offer after the hymn blesses your gift and offers it to God with thanksgiving. I invite you now to join in singing the offertory hymn, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness. Let us pray. God of grace, you have freed us from our sins and made us a kingdom in your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Accept all we offer you this day and strengthen us in the new life you have given us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now as our savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Our father who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now please join in singing our closing hymn, Yours Be the Glory. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.